There are lots of things you have to get right to do well at SEO, but there are also things you can get wrong. Hi everyone, I'm Rob Powell, and today I'm going to show you the 10 most common SEO mistakes that people make and how to avoid them. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way, when I go live with another video, you'll get notified. SEO mistake number one, not doing keyword research. This might seem rather obvious, but it's amazing the number of people who write about what they want to write about instead of what people are searching for. In SEO, the only way you'll ever know if there's an audience for the topic you want to write about is by doing keyword research. In other words, is there search volume for the topic you want to write about? But search volume is only half of the equation. You also need to look at the competition for that keyword. If the competition is too high, you'll never rank on page one for that topic. And that's why keyword research is a balancing act between search volume and competition. SEO mistake number two, ignoring search intent. Another mistake people make in SEO is failing to understand search intent, also known as searcher intent and keyword intent. This is the purpose behind the search query. What is it that people are looking for when they type that keyword or keyword phrase into Google? Broadly speaking, when people go to a search engine, they type in one of three different kinds of search queries, navigational, informational, and transactional. Navigational searches are when a searcher types in the name of a website, such as CNN or Amazon or YouTube. What makes a navigational search different from any other kind of search is that the searcher wants to go to a specific website that they already know about. An informational search, like it says, is a search for information. An example would be highest grossing movie of all time. A transactional search is a search by someone who wants to buy something. An example would be running shoes for men or wall mounting for TV. But these three categories are really just the bare bones of search intent. There's much more to it than that. Search intent is about understanding exactly what searchers are looking for when they type a search query into Google. Here's an example. The other day, I wanted to write an article about how to turn articles into podcasts. I wanted to take the reader through the whole process that I use, what equipment you need, the software required, and how to choose a platform to host your podcast. But when I typed my target keyword into Google, I discovered that the results were all about artificial intelligence applications for converting text into audio. In other words, when people search for turn articles into podcasts, they aren't looking for the kind of article I wanted to write. If I had gone ahead with that article, it would never have ranked in the search results because it failed to address the search intent behind that keyword phrase. SEO mistake number three, writing thin content that lacks topical authority. It's amazing the amount of thin copycat content that's out there. I'm always surprised that this kind of content makes it onto page one of the search results. What that means is that if you can write articles that give more context, provide more examples, contain more of your own ideas, or are just better researched, your content will rise to the top. Because topical authority, how well an article covers a topic, is a ranking factor. SEO mistake number four, not getting to the point quickly. When a searcher clicks on a page in the search results, they're scanning the article to see if it answers the query they just typed into Google. If the searcher can't see their keyword or keyword phrase in the first two or three sentences, they'll hit the back button and go to the next page in the search results and Google will record that as a bounce. Too many bounces and your page will start dropping down in the search results. That's why you've got to get to the point quickly. Tell the reader within the first 100 to 200 words that you understand their problem and you have the answer. Don't use long wordy introductions that beat around the bush. Get to the point quickly by using short punchy sentences that assure the reader that you understand what they're after and you have the information they're looking for. SEO mistake number five, skipping title tags 
and meta descriptions. Title tags and meta descriptions tell search engines what your web page is about, but they also show up in your SERP snippet, and so they act like an ad for your web page. This is where you persuade searchers that your page, and not the other pages, is the one they should click on. So title tags and meta descriptions are a golden opportunity to tilt the field in your favour. If you leave these fields empty, the search engines will fill them for you, and it won't be as good as the wording you would have chosen. Of course, Google won't always use the title tag and meta description that you provide, but if you fill these fields, at least you have a chance of shaping your SERP snippet the way you want it. SEO mistake number six, ignoring site speed. It's not often that Google actually tells us that something is a ranking factor, but that's the case with site speed. With the July 2018 speed update, Google put all websites on notice that slow websites would not rank as high as faster websites. If your pages take more than two seconds to load, your rankings will be suffering. Here are the three most effective ways to make your site load faster. One, change to a web host that has a faster server response time. Two, reduce the number of plugins on your WordPress site. And three, use a caching plugin such as WP Rocket or W3 Total Cache. SEO mistake number seven, forgetting to add schema. Schema, or Structured Data Markup, is a microdata that tells search engines how to index your content. The reason it's important for SEO is that when you have schema on your website, Google will be able to give your site rich results for your SERP snippets. With rich results, your SERP snippet will stand out from the others, resulting in a higher click-through rate. And because organic CTR is a ranking factor, your page will rise up in the search results. SEO mistake number eight, forgetting to add internal links. Adding internal links to a new article is a task that often gets forgotten, but internal linking is a vital part of SEO. Internal links between related articles create topic clusters, which show search engines that your website has topical authority around particular topics. And by showing your visitors closely related content, Internal links keep your visitors on your website for longer. That reduces bounce rate and improves the overall SEO of your website. For each new blog post you publish, you should add both outgoing internal links and incoming internal links. If you think that sounds like a lot of work, it is. And that's why I use a WordPress plugin to do it. It's called Link Whisper and it does your internal linking for you. Link Whisper is safe to use because you still have to approve each link, but what would have taken 30 to 45 minutes takes just one or two minutes. SEO mistake number nine, keyword stuffing. Keyword stuffing had its heyday 15 or 20 years ago, but it's still around. This is the practice of loading your page and or your meta tags with the keywords that you want to rank for. It's a complete waste of time as the algorithms today are based on context and semantic indexing, not keyword density. But more to the point, keyword stuffing can trigger a Google penalty that's hard to recover from. SEO mistake number 10, neglecting other content formats. SEO is getting so competitive now that you need to be producing content in other formats beside text. There are whole sections of internet users who prefer to listen to podcasts than read blog posts. You can tap into that audience by turning your articles into podcasts. And there's another huge section of your potential audience who prefer to watch videos. You can reach them by turning your podcasts into videos. In short, only producing written content is an SEO mistake. Your YouTube videos and your podcast episodes will not only allow you to reach a new audience that doesn't read blog posts, those additional channels will boost your authority signals and have a multiplier effect on how your written content performs in SEO. So those are the 10 big mistakes people make in SEO. But positives are more powerful than negatives. 
So let's turn them into things you should do instead of things you shouldn't do. With the exception of keyword stuffing, we'll leave that as a negative. 1. Do keyword research before writing your article. 2. Make sure you understand the search intent behind the keyword. 3. Write well-researched content that adds value to the reader. 4. Get to the point of your article quickly, i.e. within the first two or three sentences. 5. Make sure to add title tags and meta descriptions. 6. Make sure your pages load within two seconds. 7. Add schema markup to your website. 8. Add internal links to each new blog post. 9. Don't do any keyword stuffing. And 10. Use other content formats such as podcasts and videos. I hope this was helpful. If so, make sure you like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.